What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and in this video I want to talk about are algorithms and data structures relevant for backend engineering? The short answer is absolutely yes, but it also depends on what kind of backend engineering uh, career are you taking and what what tools or, or, or what infrastructures are you building? So if you're interested to know, stay tuned. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Hussein, and on this channel we discuss all sorts of backend engineering. So if you want to become a better software engineer, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload one of those beautiful videos. That's it. Let's just jump into this video. So uh, some of you guys ask me how important are those complex algorithms like castras and and those merge sorts and, and quick sorts and do i have to learn all of that stuff to become a backend engineer and then the answer is really really it really depends right so let's take an example and before we do that i want to talk about the different types of backend engineering uh i say career you can take and uh, you can either be an integrator so you'll integrate existing solution in the backend, and we're gonna take an example, or you are building core infrastructure backend, such as you are building a database, or you are building uh, a web server or a proxy, and depends on where are you in the stack, those algorithms can come in handy, okay? So let's think about the first one. If you are an integrator, you are a back-end engineer, but you are doing an integration kind of a work. Most of your work is integration. An example is you're building a, a CRUD application. Let's say you're building an online cinema system or a URL shortener. That's still a system, but most of this work is, if you carefully pay attention to it, it's integration work. So what you're doing is, if you're building an online system, you're not going to invent your own database, are you? You're not going to invent your own web server. You are going to spin up a web server. It could be Caddy, could be Nginx, could be an HA proxy. Well, HA proxy is not a web server, but sure, right? So you're going to spin up these pieces and you're going to choose a database. Could be MongoDB if you're going to know and go in NoSQL route, or it could be Postgres if you go in a relational route. And then you're going to start building your application logic and you're integrating an existing core back end infrastructure that you just spun up. You might throw in a Redis cache or memcached, right? So you're, in this case, you're an integrator. And for that particular case, it's kind of a straightforward job not easy but yeah, i'm not i'm not i'm not minimizing the work there right but you're you're t accepting api request and you're making some tcp connection on the back end and you're managing your uh, resources uh, you're making uh, sql statements and getting back the results and processing this result and maybe restoring it back to the database and uh, you're maintaining locking you're maintaining the multi multi concurrency and you're doing this work right but most of this work if you think about it is just your integration right you're integrating different pieces right and those most of those jobs and 90 percent of 80 percent of the work out there is this is integrating different uh things and you're building an APR, building an application. And this doesn't really involve writing algorithms, I have noticed personally. So you're not going to write, write uh, another example, if you're going to build a, a social network, right, you're going to build a social network, you're going to start asking this question. This could be an an integration kind of a back-end job or it could be a core back-end job so what could this could fall in both category to be honest and it really depends on your requirement let's take an example if you're gonna build a social network you might say well social networking is a very complex problem right because uh, you have friends and and, and those friends have other friends and, and those friends can have other friends and immediately what pops up, a graph, right? And computer science people love graph and there's a, a whole genre of just graph theory and a really complex algorithm that comes with it. So 
you can decide to pick up a back-end technology, a core back-end technology that does that job for you, a graph databases, right? A graph database that does these stuff and really does it really well. And you can just write your logic on top of it. I and mean, again, I'm not saying your logic is going to be going to be a little bit less, but you still have to write your application logic on top of this existing database. So that's one solution. But you might find with time that, well, that particular graph solution has some limitation. And a lot of people are running into this right now, you will start seeing this trend that people are building their own databases. And if you are falling in this category, you better know these algorithms, right? And let's say that graph database that you picked has a huge limitation that real requirement just doesn't really, it doesn't cut it, right? Because it will die because of some limitation, because your requirement have, let's say, you have a kind of a depth first kind of a, a use case that this graph database just dies and there is no graph database that solves this problem guess what you can work around this problem in your application logic and you still use that database but if you're serious about it you're gonna spin up and build your own graph database in this case right a database is a huge task you're building a core component now as a back-end engineer you're not just an integrator you're building a core infrastructure piece and to do that that piece is extremely complex you need to understand the computer science behind it you need to understand different data structure you're probably gonna need to throw in bloom filters you need to understand how a dicastra algorithm works right to to find the shortest path and, um, and there are many you have to read up and here's the thing guys don't freak out because nobody out there memorizes any of that stuff anyway right that's why i get mad on these interview questions like okay i got solve this sort this array using uh, the best sorting algorithm i was like what i don't memorize all that stuff nobody does even if you run into this if let's go back to our example if you run into this graph building this graph database you think that your manager is gonna stand there and says okay I'll go ahead build it build this thing now right now because you, you have one hour to build it no this is an extremely complex problem you gotta sit down you gotta read a research you spend weeks reading and pick up the right algorithm compare algorithms together this is not an easy task. Yeah, so you're probably going to fall into that category one one way or another. So don't freak out. And yeah, I'm going to come to that point, like when to know, learn these algorithms and all that stuff. So yeah, guys, if you're building a core technology, a core backend technology, algorithms, you will need to learn them. And I'm not saying have them handy and memorized all. No, just have keep in mind that you're gonna learn that if you're building an integration system like an api or crud i rarely run into a problem where you're gonna need these complex algorithms to be honest my there might be some exceptions obviously guys right but most of the time you're you're stitching things together so that's the first thing we need to know there are two categories there is integrators and there is core integrators most of the time don't need those algorithms or data structures uh, however, those uh, the core technology use them heavily, use those data structures and use the algorithms very, very heavily. Again, I'm not saying that's not vice versa. You can use those algorithms in an integration backend job. That being said, guys, I want you to also be an open mind and keep an open mind and be pragmatic with these algorithms and, and data structures. Uh, a better algorithm or switching algorithm is not always the solutions. And, and here is a perfect example. Assume that you have certain sorting algorithm, let's say, uh, quicksort, right? And quicksort is sorting around a million rows, 
right? And those million rows are we're sorting in and we're picking up the first hundred rows and returning them to a user. It's a, it's a request that pulls up, it's a paging. Let's say it's, it does paging. It makes a request to get the first page, hundred results, all right, a hundred rows, and that turns it on and queries the entire table and then sorts that in the logic and uses quick sort to sort those and then re return the first hundred rows, right? And those obviously is getting slow because 100 million, 1 million resorting 1 million is obviously slow. So you can argue says, okay, merge source is going to increase the performance by 2% or 3% because it's faster for this particular case. But you can, and here's, and here's the thing, guys, if you tweak one small thing, you can fix this problem right there. Why? Are we even querying million records and sorting them in the application? That's just wrong, right? Switching the algorithm is not gonna do you any good. It's not gonna do you. It's, it's gonna give you some better performance. But you have to be pragmatic and think about why am I doing this? The right way of doing this is like, hey, keep those million rows in the database and let the database does its job. Query, give me, order by whatever uh, row you want, whatever field you want, and give me the top 100 results in the database. So the database will do that optimally, correctly, using an index, and gives you only what you need, and you as a thin layer, you just ship it to the user. So that's the correct fix, right? The, 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 the fix in this case is not to argue which algorithm is the best, quick sort or merge sort or bubble sort, probably bad. But no, sometimes algorithms are not always the solution, guys, right? So you got to think about that real hard before just changing the algorithm or just implementing another algorithm because it's better or, or gives better performance, right? This is, this can give you into this situation. Sometimes you have to be program, pragmatic and think about what is the application doing and does it make sense? And finally, guys, algorithms and data structure and learning those is a great idea regardless of what you're doing. You don't have to memorize them. You don't have to do anything crazy. Read about them. If you know, this is knowledge. Knowledge is key. Knowledge is king. Anything you can do to get knowledge, by all mean, obtain it, right? If you know how Diacastra work, pull it up and just read through how it works and, and see it will not harm you. It will not slow you down. Just read about it because one day in the future, it's like, oh, I run into this problem. I'm building this core backend technology. And you will say... Oh, wait a minute. I read one three years ago about this algorithm. Let me search back. I, obviously, you're going to index back and search it and read it more, right? But just the idea of reading and obtaining knowledge is always, 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 always a good idea. Never hurt you. Keep reading. Keep learning, guys. Stay awesome. I'm going to see you on the next one. Goodbye.